Okay, so this is practice quiz two. I'm going to go over most of the problems in this quiz, but I will not go over all of them. Question number one. The number of boxes BM needed to pack M movies can be found using the function BM equals M divided by 5. If there are no more than 100 movies, what is the range of the function for the situation? Okay, so I know that um, I am packing M movies. I know that um, I'm not going to pack more than 100 movies. And I know that I have this equation, BM equals M over 5. The BM in this case stands for the number of boxes that you would need to box your movies. In this problem, I'm being asked for the range. And if you remember, X and Y went to the doctor. Um, the Y is the range. So I'm focusing on the y. Here, if you look at your equation, you don't have a y. But um, in an equation, the y is usually on the left side by itself. And in this equation, what we have on the left side by itself is the bm. bm happens to be our range. And in this case, the range is the number of boxes that you need to uh, use to box your movies. So let's make a little table. Instead of x, what they have is an m, which stands for the number of movies. And instead of y, they're using bm, which is the number of boxes that you need to box those movies. Um, suppose that you have zero movies. How many boxes would you need? Well, looking at our equation, um, I would plug in zero for the m. So I would have bm equals 0. 0 divided by 5 is 0. Suppose that you have 10 movies. I'm going to put a 10 for the m. For 10 movies, based on this equation, bm equals 10 divided by 5, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. So bm, or the number of boxes I would need for 10 movies, is 2. If I have 20 movies, plugging it into the equation, I need 4 boxes. But in this case, I'm being told specifically that I'm not going to box more than 100 movies. So, for 100 movies, I'm going to extend this table a little bit. How many boxes would I need based on this equation? Well, I would have to do 100 100 for movies divided by 5 based on the equation. And right away, I can see that I'm only going to need up to 20 boxes, no more than 20 boxes. So what is my range? Well, the smallest amount of boxes that I could possibly need is zero. That's if I don't have any movies. But the largest amount of boxes that I could possibly need is a 20. Remember, BM is the number of boxes that's our range. So... My answer should be the set of all integers from 0 to 20. Let's look at number 2. A balloon has 10 liters of air and is left to deflate after a hot air balloon ride. The amount of air inside the balloon A is a function of the time T the balloon is left deflating. The air leaks out at a rate of 2 liters per hour. The balloon is left deflating until there is no more air left inside. What is the range of the function described? Again, I'm looking for the range. Um, in this case, I don't have any equation to go by. So I have to formulate my own equation. Um, I know that the balloon has 10 liters of air and that 2 liters of air are coming out every hour because the balloon is deflating. So after one hour, I'm going to make a little table. After one hour, I know that the balloon is only going to have eight liters left, right? And after two hours, I know the balloon is only going to have six liters of air left. How do I know that? How do I get eight? Um, well, 
All I did was I took 10, which is the amount of air inside the balloon at the moment, and I subtracted 2 from it. But how did I go from, how, do I, how did I determine 6 for 2 hours? Well, I said I have 10 liters of air in my balloon right now, and I need to take away 4. And I found 4 by multiplying 2 times 2. So my equation in this case is y equals 10 minus 2x. Remember, um, the per tells us this is the slope, and we always put the slope in front of x. What is the range? Well, for how many hours could this balloon continue to deflate? Well, after 3 hours, I only have 4 liters of air left. After 4 hours, I only have 2 liters of air left in the balloon. And after 5 hours, there is no more air left inside the balloon. Um, so what is the range? Well, at 0 hours, I had 10 liters of air. So my range should be from 0 to 10 liters, right? Because range is the y. And the biggest amount of liters of air that I could have in that balloon is 10, and the smallest amount is 0. There is a typo in this problem. Um, the answer is supposed to be C, and instead of saying 5, um, I should have had 10 right there. Number three. The graph below shows the amount of water in a pool as it is drained at a constant rate. A second pool has was being drained at the same time at the same rate, but initially had 500 gallons more water. Which equation would best describe the amount of water doubly remaining in the second pool? when it is drained for 8 hours. Okay, so basically here is a graph, and I'm trying to figure out what is the equation that matches that graph. Well, first of all, I know that the y-intercept is at 8,500. Remember, in an equation, the y-intercept always goes at the end. Um, I can see from C and D that those are wrong y-intercepts. Those are already wrong answers. My um, answer comes down to A or B. Um, the only difference between equations A and B is that one has an H next to, their, next to the slope and the other one has an M next to the slope. What am I working with, H or M? Well, looking at my uh, question, which equation best describes the amount of water W remaining in the pool drain for H hours? I'm working with hours. So I'm working with H, so I know the answer is A and not B. To rent a trailer, a home improvement store charges a fee of $35 for each day, plus $0.25 cents per mile driven. So if the trailer is driven at miles in one day, the equation can be used to find the total charges for one day trailer rental. If the store decreases the rates per mile, I'm decreasing the rate per mile driven by 5 cents. Which equation can be used to determine the new cost of renting a trailer for one day and driving M miles? Okay, so right now, the store is charging 25 cents per mile driven. But I want to decrease that by 5 cents. 25 cents minus 5 cents is 20 cents. So I know that my new slope is no longer going to be 25 cents. My new slope has to be 20 cents. The only answers that have tw uh, 20 cents for the slope are A and C, so I cross out B and D. And then the next thing is um, the problem does not tell me uh, anything about changing the initial fee that the store charges. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change that 35 at the end. I'm gonna leave it the same. And the only one that does that is A. So my answer is A. Number five, the graph shows the income Taylor receives from selling homecoming mums. If Taylor decides to write a function to model her income from selling mums, how would the graph of the model be affected if Taylor's income is reduced by $15 per mum? 
Okay, so at the moment, Taylor is charging, it looks like $60 per mom. For one mom, you pay $60. For two, you pay $120. But we're going to reduce that by $15. So for one mom, he's going to pay $15. So for one mom, he's going to pay $15. That should be right there somewhere. For two moms, he'll pay $30. That should be there somewhere. For three moms, he'll pay $45, which should be there. For four moms, he should pay $60. For five moms, he should pay $75, which is right there. For six moms, he should be paying... $90, which is that point right there. I'm trying to be as precise as I can. Um, and if I connect these dots, this is how the line would kind of look. Um, of course, here we're not looking at a line that is connected. We're looking at different points. Um, something that you should notice, though, is that the graph, the original graph was pretty steep. Right? I'm going to connect these, even though the problem doesn't um, say that you should connect them, but just to get the point across. These original points were, uh, the original graph was very steep compared to the new graph. The new graph is less steep. So the graph would actually become less steep. It would become more horizontal. Okay, let's look at number six. An architect built a scale model of a shopping mall. On the model, a circular fountain is 25 inches tall and 7.5 inches in diameter. If the actual fountain is 10 feet tall, what is its diameter? So I'm going to start by setting up this in a proportion. I'm going to put how tall the building is on top, um, the circumference. The circular fountain is 25 inches tall, and the diameter, I'm going to put the diameter at the bottom. The diameter here is 7.5 inches. Well, I know that the actual fountain is 10 feet tall, but... Um, both of these measurements, to 25 and 7.5, are in inches. So instead of using 10 feet, I need to turn those 10 feet into inches. Um, I know that there are 12 inches in one foot, so in 10 feet, I would have 10 times 12, which is 120 inches. And that's how tall the actual fountain is. I'm trying to find the diameter of the actual fountain. So I'm going to put an X for diameter um, at the bottom because I don't know what that is. That's what I'm trying to find. So now I cross multiply. I know that 120 times 7.5 is 90. Nine, I mean, sorry, it's 900. And I'm going to divide that by 25. And that gives me 36 inches, so x equals 36 inches. But my answers are all in feet. What is 36 inches in feet? Well, 36 divided by 12 will give me 3, so my answer is D. Okay, um, I'm going to set up 7 as a proportion as well. Um, watch part two of practice quiz two um, to finish watching the rest of the problems worked out.